Good evening with Harry and Sir I'm Olivia Kuei. Ahead on the big story, NCUC Secretary General Ng Chi Ming sits down with our Straits Times colleague to talk about job struggles in this unprecedented time and how NCUC is helping workers. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the Straits Times channel so you never miss the show. The Health Ministry confirmed 422 new COVID-19 cases today. Five of these cases are in the community, with one being a Singaporean. The rest are foreign workers living in dormitories. Singapore's total count now is over 39,000. In other news, starting from today, travellers flying out of selected cities in Australia and New Zealand can transit in Singapore before making their way to their destinations. This comes after Singapore Airlines was given the green light to resume transit flights. Transit passengers can wait for their connecting flights at new holding areas set up in Changi Airport Terminals 1 and 3. They must wear face masks and follow safe distancing markers. Currently, this transit arrangement is only for routes operated by Singapore Airlines, Silk Air and Scoop. Singapore's first woman general has joined the Labour movement and is expected to be fielded as a People's Action Party candidate in the next general election. Ms Gan Xiao Huang left the armed forces in March and joined the National Trades Union Congress in April. She is currently the Deputy Chief Executive of Employment Institute E2I. Before the COVID-19 circuit breaker, the 45-year-old was spotted on walkabouts in Bishan Topayo GRC. A male student is currently under police investigation after at least 10 teenage girls accused him of sexual harassment. They claimed on Twitter and Instagram that he had, among other things, sent them lewd messages and photos. Some of the incidents date back to 2017. He was identified as a student at ITE College East. The Institute told The Straits Times last night that it was aware of the allegations but was unable to comment further as police investigations are ongoing. Meanwhile, the 16-year-old imperial treasure Nanpei restaurant in Nian City has become the latest victim of the COVID-19 pandemic. The imperial treasure group announced that the meat market it ceased operations since June 8th. A spokesman for the group said this was so that the company can focus its resources on other outlets. The FMB industry has been severely affected by the circuit breaker, with some eateries reporting up to an 80% drop in sales. Trust the government, NTUC, and your employers. That's the message NTUC Secretary General Ng Chi Ming had for workers in an interview with the Straits Times earlier today. 100,000 Singapore residents are expected to be jobless this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's the first part of Mr Ng's interview with Assistant Political Editor Lim Yan Liang. So last Friday, DPNH mentioned that an unprecedented 100,000 Singaporeans uh, may find themselves unemployed or unable to find work this year due to COVID-19. What is the general sentiment among workers right now? And what impact do you expect rising unemployment to have on workers? Well, the, the great sense of anxiety is what I am picking up from my conversations with workers. Um, from the start of COVID, where it was more about life lives, it has shifted more and more towards preserving livelihood jobs. So with all the different uh, new data emerging from statistics globally, you know, where you hear the US news, European news, and our own local minus four to minus seven type of news, well, many of my uh, workers uh, tell me they are worried and with reasonable uh, uh, balance of uh, what needs to be done in terms of their own actions, but still a gnawing sense of anxiety. Well, unemployment rate, thankfully, has been somewhat uh, subdued, even though the conditions are really quite challenging. I think partly because some of the things that we have done uh, from the labour movement in partnership with our employers uh, somewhat uh, tempering the unemployment rate in the first three months. The government's GSS supported quite a lot of employment as well. But 
inevitably, I think there will be some job losses. How do you feel morale might be affected and what can be done to uh, uplift workers in this time? Well, with the government assistance, uh, the job support scheme and the, the various uh, financial backing that is put on the table for employers and the substantive uh, assistance schemes, whether it's the COVID support grant, the SERS, the whole uh, package of the $100 billion for budgets actually does show up morale. But uh, on the way forward, I don't take anything for granted. Uh, my ears will be very close to the ground, to whether employers and uh, to the workers as well. Mm. Now, I think we do have strengths. You know, PM has said so, and we have been constantly reminding uh, my workers on the ground too, that actually Singapore has strength and we can weather this storm. Don't let it uh, be all gloom and doom because we must have that that tenacity with a vision forward to be able to overcome the challenge of COVID. Mr. you mentioned in Parliament last week that NTUC's Job Security Council has placed more than 10,000 workers since Indeed. it was formed in February. Alongside job matching for those at risk of being displaced, is NTUC doing anything unprecedented to help workers during these unprecedented times? Or are you employing more of a tried and tested approach? <laughs> I think it's uh, really a combination of both. I mean, the try and tested approach where we have strong networks on the ground with employers, with government and with government agencies. Well, we are riding on those to uh, create opportunities, some informal, some through uh, more formal government programs. But all these are strengths of our tripartite relationship. So try and tested indeed. But unprecedented cases, well, on the government front, I don't recall uh, as an adult, Grants such as the COVID support grant for unemployment is significant, 2004 over three months, SERS $9,000 over nine months. So all these really are unprecedented schemes to help individuals. And the job support scheme, uh, ten, few tens of billions of dollars to help employers with cash, credit and uh, cost issues, ultimately to support jobs. Well, I, I, I think that is unprecedented and hopefully never again. But on the NTUC front, well, we, we have experimented with a few things. In fact, the Job Security Council, as you mentioned, I, I said in February, I did not think, I, I wasn't thinking of COVID-19. It was really to help the 40-year-old, 50-year-old PMEs where they get out of a job in the previous economy. It is already challenging for them to get back into the workforce. It was set up to see how we can better match uh, such workers back into the workforce. But, well, a pilot program has uh, gone into full swing. It is no longer a pilot. And as I said in Parliament, 10,000 jobs. Uh, it has proven to be a very useful uh, tool. Well, but what's new about this job matching? Well, you see, we are riding on our networks to actually preempt retrenchment. So, example, uh, in the aviation industry, SQ, Scoot. We actually know that the companies are cash-strapped and workers are under pressure. So we went in to help. And one of the things that we were doing actively is to actually uh, find receiving companies or government where there are jobs available to match our crew to these jobs without them having gone through retrenchment. So preemptively, going in to help, reducing the anxieties, reducing all the different friction. So, well, is it unprecedented? I don't know. But uh, one of my favourite sayings is that I don't really care whether it's a white cat or a black cat, so long as it does the job, catch the mice, I'm okay. <laughs> Mr. Ng, I know that you've, uh, like you mentioned NTUC has deployed its arsenal of tools to help workers, but COVID-19 comes at a time of, uh, it's actually exacerbating or accelerating a lot of global shifts and yes. uh, structural transformations yes. that Singapore was already going through already. So what is your biggest worry as Labour Chief right now? Well, I think without a doubt is the livelihood of my uh, workers, their jobs. Uh, the challenges of COVID-19 is really, uh, I think, going to be uh, very severe. Uh, 
it is not just this period, but if you look at the compounding effects of the issues geostrategically between the great powers, you will see that there are somewhat layering issues that I'm concerned about. So, and if you pull this back into our small red dot, well, we are open economy, we are a trading nation. So, when we recover out of this COVID-19, I think we will emerge into a much more troubled world. And uh, we should be prepared for that. So 12 months, 24 months, well, let's look at where are our strengths, overcome some of the weaknesses, and launch ourselves forward. So uh, Industry 4.0 is not just a buzzword in my view. We have been pushing it very hard to pair up Industry 4.0 with Workers 4.0. I think there are more companies now uh, ready to move with us because ultimately, you know, it is not just that I, in the past, where I really don't have that urgency, now there is a burning platform. And importantly, there are examples of companies, big or small, that have pivoted, and they're coping with COVID better, and with a probably arguably better trajectory forward. This is a time of a lot of uh, buffeting winds. So workers yes. have been asked uh, by many of uh, the 4G leaders to temper their expectations, accept some pain, in order to help their companies stay afloat and to save jobs. And uh, Manpower Minister Josephine Teo said some workers have come to agreements with their employers through their unions about pay cuts. So they're not just happening uh, unilaterally, there's some yeah. agreement. How has NTUC or some unions managed to achieve this? And isn't this quite unusual when you would expect workers to see what they can get and companies and bosses to see where they can cut costs? Yeah. Well, indeed, it is very unusual. I don't see it very often in other parts of the world. And uh, our ministers can say that because actually many of them have roots, have, have roots in the labour movement. My MOM uh, colleague Josephine Teo have been in NTUC before. Ong Yi Kang has been in NTUC before. Chan Chun Seng, MTI. So you see the trust that it's not just with the employers, but critically with the workers that have put their faith in us. So with this trust, well, they know and our employers know that we are serious about getting win-win situations for all. You know, you can optimize wages or you can optimize capital individually, but overall the system actually, like what you say in most parts of the world, is actually suboptimal. But in Singapore, with our way of tripartism, we have created win-win with a much bigger pie for both capital gains and for wages to grow in Singapore. So ultimately a simple answer, sorry I gave you a very long answer, but ultimately the simple answer is trust. Uh, this is an uh, open secret ingredient, but very hard to forge. So with this trust that we have in the labour movement and tripartism, well, we could persuade workers. Look at the big picture. And uh, it is not just during COVID, but other circumstances as well. Well, if the company were to fail, what happens to all the rice bowls? Equally shattered. But in such circumstances where we have already had working experience with the bosses, we know they care about workers, can we share the burden? To what extent can we share the burden? Uh, in the airlines, I can tell you that some of my uh, stewardess, my sisters, my pilot, brothers and sisters have pay cuts of 50-60%. Diffic really difficult times, but they came on board. Uh, the company made some concessions where we discussed with them, can we get them secondary employment? So we matched them to secondary jobs seconded out, but they're still keeping their job in the airlines. So these are the different intricacies of give and take, where there's a trusting relationship that we can forge possibilities uh, that are not always visible to the public. So, well, this is a strength that we should treasure and I hope that a new generation of Singapore will understand why tripartism is so unique and such a pillar in our, in our framing of our overall economy. 
That was NTUC Secret Secretary General Ng Chi Ming with Assistant Political Editor Lim Yen Liang. Now part two is coming up, but first, here's Dylan Ang with the global headlines. Thanks, guys. The number of coronavirus cases in the United States has topped 2 million. The US continues to record an average of 20,000 new infections daily, and so far, the pandemic has claimed the lives of more than 112,900 Americans. Although the number of cases has dwindled in certain parts of the country, several states like Texas and Florida are seeing a significant increase, tipping experts to say that a second wave is imminent. In this larger city, Mumbai has recorded 51,000 coronavirus cases, taking its peak past that of Wuhan, where the virus first emerged. The news comes amid a surge of infections in South Asia and coincides with India's decision to relax restrictions after three months of a stringent lockdown. India now has a total of more than 287,000 cases. Closer to home, Indonesia similarly posted a record number of COVID-19 infections yesterday, sparking calls for health experts for authorities to slam the brakes on easing restrictions. Last week, Jakarta opened mosques for the first time in three months and announced a gradual reopening of offices, malls and tourist attractions. The world's fourth most populous country has officially recorded 34,000 coronavirus cases, but with one of the world's lowest testing rates, is believed to have a much higher real count. And finally, Johnson & Johnson is bringing forward human trials for its COVID-19 vaccine by two months to the second half of July. The trial will test the vaccine against a placebo and assess its safety and immune response in 1,045 healthy people. Tests will be run on subjects between 18 and 55, as well as those 65 years and older. The company is among several to have signed deals with the US government to create enough manufacturing capacity for more than 1 billion doses through 2021. And those are our global updates. Back to you guys. In the second part of the Straits Times interview with NTUC Secretary General Ng Chi Ming, talks about what's at stake for NTUC and the workers at Singapore's next general election. You said in your latest budget debate speech about how the labour movement will work with companies to push them to transform during this period yes. where you know there might not be uh, a lot of demand for their, their goods or their services. But I've spoken to some like already lean businesses doing their best to maximise their manpower. So how receptive do you think they are going to be to this push? And if I, if I were a business owner, how would you convince me to <laughs> set aside my immediate concerns and uncertainty and make the radical changes to my operations and even new investments in automation or training yeah. of my staff? Well, I'm, I'm realistic and pragmatic. Uh, I understand not all businesses under such circumstances have the capacity to do what we are trying to push. Uh, in terms of transformation. But where companies have the capacity and the vision, this is really the best time to do. How would I persuade you? Well, let me see. How about 90% of whatever capitalization that you intend to do, go through together with NTUC, with government grants, you can receive 90%. So let's say you have a $100,000 technology project to rejig your factory. $90,000 can be secured through government grants. You fork out 10,000. Is it within your current means? Well, so if it's within your current means, financial issues, not a real problem. And we have set up a training arm in NTUC and there's a specialization of things that we want to do in terms of company training committees where we partner companies. So ranging from Tamasic companies all the way to SMEs, 50 employees. We have partnered them to actually look at what the management may want to do, get our unions involved, and go through a ops tech operations and technology road mapping to see what is the new business model, what are the technology possibilities, and do go through a design process and move this that management and workers are together. You save time, the resources is made very affordable to you, and so with uh, a booming economy, you have no time. In a loud economy, you have no vision, then I really 
think that the burning back platform will get you. So, well, here I am trying to nudge you and also tell you the realities. Because if you look at the world today, if you don't digitalize, even if you get out of COVID, what happens in three years, five years? Given not just the business environment, but the local conditions of labor, well, I hope I put to you a persuasive argument that we should move. And you have partners uh, with us, uh, you can partner with us to actually see where we can bring this to. You know, I, I don't mean just the market company. Let me, let me uh, recall the company that I mentioned to Straits Times uh, last week, I think, Certec. Certec is not a very big company. Uh, if I recall correctly, about 50 or so employees. In the midst of COVID, they actually pivot from the uh, engineering company producing some aluminum products of sorts, where they see the opportunity in terms of medical supplies, they pivoted within three months. And this morning, when I was checking in on them, well, my officers are in the company doing exactly what OTR and helping the company, even in COVID, to actually transform further. So from the big companies like Tamasic to small ones, it is not just for the big boys. If you are willing to go with us, we are willing to partner you to the best of our abilities. And importantly, this is not just for business success. As I mentioned to you earlier, ultimately NTUC has vested interest in this. I want Industry 4.0 to succeed for my country. I want Industry, industry 4.0 to succeed for my workers. And if the employers can nudge workers together with NTUC, I'll be for it. Because it will lead to better wages, better welfare, and importantly, in the medium term, long term, better work prospects. Mm -hmm. That must be the strategy for us in tripartism to move everybody together. Speaking about tripartism, at the NTUC Delegates Conference last year, PM Lee spoke about the special bond between PAP and uh, NTUC and gave his assurance that this bond will be strengthened and sustained. What's at stake for NTUC and workers at the coming election and how will union leaders be involved? What will be at stake? I think it's a whole lot. You know, from the different questions you, you asked me, I think the challenges for a country going through COVID, a small country like us going through COVID, is immense. Uh, we will be very fortunate if we get out of it in two years, five years, maybe. But even then, if you just look at the amount of muscle we put on the table, $100 billion. Traditionally, our yearly budget is about that magnitude, 80 billion, 100 billion. On top of our normal budget this year, 100 billion. We have uh, delayed collection of many taxes to help companies. So what happens in the next year? What happens subsequent years? You will see the pressures that the government will have to go through. What is at stake for NTUC, my workers? I will say that it is our survival, our livelihood. And what do I think we would do? We will support a government that, is, that has a proven track record, trusted with the necessary expertise, and importantly, the care demonstrated for workers since our independence. Look at our cost of, uh, look at our, uh, look at our trajectory. Look at our trajectory of our standard of living. Look at the income growth almost unprecedented in the world. From third world to first world, to 60,000, 70,000 US dollars per capita, or PPP, whatever measurements you want. I would put my faith in that government. I know I, I am now a minister in government, uh, but even if I were not, I would put my faith in such a government. What is at stake? Well, I think my life, my daughter's lives, and if I'm lucky enough to have grandchildren, their lives as well. Likewise for my workers. 
And that was NTUC Secretary General Ng Chi Ming with the Straits Times Assistant Political Editor Lim Yen Liang. You can watch the full interview on the Straits Times YouTube channel. Let's go back to Dylan for what's also in the news. The U.S. state of Washington has launched a new investigation into the death of the Manuel Ellis, who died while in police custody in March. The decision came in the wake of a newly obtained surveillance video showing Ellis crying out while being restrained by police at a road intersection. He said crying out, I can't breathe, sir, multiple times in the nearly nine-minute clip. The attorney representing Mr. Ellis's family said the new footage was at odds with the original police report on the incident. And in light of recent calls for police reform, Amazon has announced a one-year ban on allowing US police to use its facial recognition technology. In a blog post, the retail titan said it hopes the one year might give Congress enough time to implement stronger regulations for its ethical use. In other US news, President Donald Trump said he will not even consider renaming military bases named after Confederate generals, saying that they were part of the great American heritage. Many object to the use of Confederacy symbols due to their direct connection to racism and the states that fought to continue slavery. Mr Trump's remarks follow reports that top military officials were open to changes in light of George Floyd's death. Across the causeway, the High Court in Kuala Lumpur heard that designer handbags worth millions of ringgit and seized during a raid related to the 1MDB scandal have been ruined by Magic Ink marker pens. Lawyer Tantri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, who represents former Malaysia Prime Minister Najib Razak, told the court that the police were careless and had no respect while handling the handbags. He said despite knowing their value, the police marked the bags with magic ink. The damage to the handbags was realised by Najib's wife, Rosma Mansour, and her lawyer during an earlier inspection. That was also in the news. I'm Dylan Ang. Thanks, Dylan. Before we go, a reminder that Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security Teo Chi Hien will be addressing the nation later tonight at 7.30 p.m. The theme of his speech is Resilience in a Changing External Environment. You can watch it right here on The Straits Times Facebook, YouTube and Twitter platforms. For more news and videos, do visit straitstimes.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the red button below. Once again, I'm Harianto Diman with Olivia Kuei. Join us tomorrow for more stories on A Big Story.